hope for survival. Where will you be when the lights go out? At Hope for Survival, our goal is preparedness. Our mission, self-reliance. Get prepared. Hey fellow patriots, welcome to Hope for Survival. I'm Bravo Echo, and in this podcast video, I'd like to uh, talk to you about food preparedness. Um, I'm using the same format that I use in my book, Hope for Survival, um, how preparing food, water, shelter, and security can save your life. Um, you can obtain a copy of this book on my website, at www.hopeforsurvival.com or you can email me at preparedness101 at protonmail.com and in my book um, I talk about a four-tiered food planning process using four different types of food um, this process will fit in everyone's budget uh, some foods are more expensive than others uh, I'm often told by folks going through training that they're payday to payday living on a tight budget and I took that into consideration um, when I was putting this plan together so let me talk to you briefly um, what this is about so with all the events that are taking place in the world today you can look around and see um, the growing national debt, instability, socioeconomic issues, um, a lot of hate amongst people. But what if you're in a car wreck and you lose your job uh, for several months? Um, what if you simply lose your job? What if you become ill? Um, this food plan will work for all occasions. Uh, all hazardous type conditions, man-made natural, technological, or just simply life in general. You could be planning on retiring in six months to a year, and until once you retire, until you get into a comfortable uh, routine with your adjusted income, you could put food back now that will help you offset your grocery bill until um, you get comfortable with your retirement income. So the food plan um, that I put together that I use for myself and my family, I look at um, different um, availabilities of types of food. Some of them I can buy in store, others it takes a little effort on my part, but all together with uh, the available resources, time and effort, this will fit into anyone's lifestyle. So I look at um, starting, if you have absolutely no food put back or stored and you live grocery trip to grocery trip, maybe you have two in your household, maybe you have four, maybe you have seven or, seven or eight, maybe with children or maybe you have a family member living with you or uh, a parent, so you can make this fit uh, your lifestyle, whether you're in an apartment or you're living um, in a rural area. That's all up to you to adjust. So you can see here, I've got different types of store-bought canned food. You can find really good deals uh, and buy case lot sales, or uh, you can buy a little bit at a time and put it back. Uh, you can buy multiple cases. You can order cases, even pallets through Walmart. Um, you can check at Aldi's and other uh, grocery type um, box stores, Sam's Club, Costco. Um, you can get all the items that you need. One of the things you need to take into consideration is diet. Is there anyone that requires a special diet, maybe gluten-free diet? And also, 
that you buy and store foods that your family will will like okay now keep in mind this isn't setting you up for what you're used to getting on a cruise okay these are foods that that are affordable that will help get you through um, any type of event where you can't get food or your income may not allow you to get food okay a little flexibility and adjusting on your part um, and you can you can get through this so you have <clears throat> different types of uh, canned foods a lot of folks I say well if the canned food expires what do I do with it if the cans not damaged and it's not dented it's not leaking you keep it okay um, I made some uh, vegetable soup with uh, canned uh, beef uh, earlier this week and the cans were dated 2016 and 2017 corn green beans store-bought canned potatoes uh, and peas things of that nature okay protein you can buy at Sam's Club and Costco they're in a tube of like four or five cans for like ten dollar you can get white chicken breast you can get salmon um, you can get turkey for a little more cost you can order through uh, preparedness stores canned beef canned chicken canned turkey things of that nature keep in mind when you buy meats and poultry that are canned they're going to be high in sodium so keep that in mind um, potted meat Vienna sausage, hillbilly steak, um, treat, spam, fried. It's great. It's great on sandwiches and it's also great with some vegetables. Remember, you're not on a cruise. So these are foods um, that will help put some protein in your body when you combine um, these other types of, of foods. A second part of our food plan is Miss Lucy and I. Uh, we, we like to can using a canner and we use a process. Um, this right here, this is some canned beef roast. We buy the beef uh, just as it's butchered. We bring it home and we immediately can it. Beef roast, beef tips, uh, burger, things of that nature. We also can lots of chicken. We like chicken. It's healthy for you. Um, here is venison, cubed deer. So uh, if you're a hunter, why do we can, pressure can, and not just put it in our freezer? One of, the, one of the reasons is because we just enjoy having it already cooked. So if we come home and it's late, we don't have a lot of time to prep dinner, it's already cooked. All we have to do is warm it and it's already ready. We're away from our home at times uh, for periods of uh, a week, couple weeks. If something happened and our freezer went out, we would lose all of that investment. So it's already canned and we don't have to worry about it. Okay. Green beans here. This is uh, ground beef already seasoned with taco meat. Down here you have some potatoes and carrots that are canned. Uh, we canned beets um, and, and all types of vegetables. Okay. So in our seven to, to day to two week period, um, use a combination of your um, store-bought canned food and what you have and add a little protein in it. These items here, they will last longer, but you can't, excuse me, you can take away from it. Uh, we let these uh, sit on the shelf more so and we used our store-bought canned tuna, canned salmon, canned chicken, and things of that nature but you can rotate it to fit how it works for you <clears throat> another stage that we use um, in our food plan so we have two here store-bought and uh, pressure canned um, we buy dry foods pastas like spaghetti macaroni we buy cornmeal mix sugar flour um, beans, navy beans, mixed beans, pinto beans. I take them, I buy mylar bags. You can, you can pick them up uh, 
uh, through Carolina Readiness Supply Store in North Carolina on their website, or you can order them um, from Amazon if you wish. These are quart bags here. Um, I use pint bags, quart bags. Make sure you have oxygen absorbers or oxidizers to put the right size inside of your bags and it will help keep your, your product dry. So I put dry foods in my Mylar bag. I use a heat source such as an iron or you can invest in a uh, heat crimper and close the lids and seal them up. You can see here. Um, and then once I have these, I make an inventory list, which I'll show you in a minute, and I pack them in five gallon buckets, which I will show you. Another option um, is you can put dry foods uh, in, can in canning jars like this, or if you open one of these and you're not gonna use it all, you can take this, once your bag is open and it's been used, you're probably going to um, not be able to reuse it. Take what's left over and put it into a jar and use it your next time around. These are sprouts. Um, there's all different types of sprouts. These are great for home and they're also good for um, backpacking to put in your uh, ready bag or your bug out bag. This here is a, a sprout container that you can grow them in. There's different methods you can grow sprouts in. Over here, you have MREs. I have MREs, I eat them a lot, 20 years in the military. Um, they're not bad. I keep them at my home. I do not use them in my backpack because of size and weight. So I try in my, in my uh, bug out bag, uh, three day bag, I try to use uh, foods <clears throat> that are ready, um, pretty much just add water and maybe heat. Um, or I can use the packets of tuna or Vienna sausages and things of that nature, add it in there um, with some sprouts. It all depends upon what kind of diet that you're wanting to have. Other options are the small packets of Mountain House. Um, here you can see uh, backpack pantry. There's all different types. You'll have to try them. Don't just buy them and put them on the shelf. I would recommend that you have a meal at least one time a month to see how your body is going to react um, to having this type of processed um, dehydrated food in your system. Also how you're going to react to the sodium. Drink lots of water before and lots of water after you have one of these meals. Drinks. Kids love hot chocolate. You can put hot water inside this bag shake it up real good this is great for um, if you're outside with your grandkids around a pit fire at night to have hot chocolate <clears throat> the grandkids also love this is pizza and of course coffee gotta have coffee and you can get some really good deals on different types this is a franklin's 100 percent medium roast colombian you're in the field that's great uh, when it's cold out <clears throat> to end your evening and also to start your morning if everything you have you need to make sure that you you can get a hold of seeds you want heirloom seeds and if you can get them in number 10 cans look at the um, quantity and types of seeds that are in here um, this here is 13 favorite varieties and will produce over 2,300 pounds of produce. I strongly encourage you to consider having enough seeds um, and plan to plan um, two garden cycles. Okay, you can't. You you may have never gardened before. You may have never grown anything, and it may not turn out well. That you can get fresh vegetables to have. Um, daily during the growing season and also to can for the winter. However, you may develop a soil problem. You may have a drought. You may have a cool spell and you may have a rainy season that ruins your vegetables. So always plan to have enough food to cover you to 
to where that growing season is going to augment your food supply to where you're not totally dependent upon what's coming out of that garden. Use it as a plus. Long-term storage to 20 to 25 years. There's different brands as well. This is the uh, Augustine banana chips. You can get eggs. You can get about any type of uh, dehydrated. This is made by Thrive. This is creamy, creamy wheat cereal. And this here is a Mountain House brand of scrambled eggs. Um, I stocked up a lot on eggs, potatoes, um, flours, salts, um, sugars, fr dehydrated fruits, um, dehydrated white milk, dehydrated chocolate milk. Um, it's more of a treat, um, especially if you have kids around, than anything. So one of the things that I want to point out is um, everyone deserves the right to have food to eat, okay? And uh, even though we prepare uh, to take care of our family, there's also a realization in our country there are folks that simply can't run out and fill a trailer full of food and bring it home and store it to survive for six months, three months, uh, and beyond. I built my food plan on a 30-day, then a 90-day, then a six month, and then I went to one year. And as I added items and tiered it, um, I started adding protein to where I could cover enough protein um, throughout the weeks and the months, uh, and then build up on that to make sure um, I, I was covered. Another important thing is you need to have an inventory. You need to inventory all of your store-bought canned items, protein, uh, meats, poultry. You also um, need to inventory um, all of your pressure canned vegetables and meats that you have and also um, all of your dehydrated foods uh, as well as your long-term food storage to know how much you have. How can you properly plan and know how long of a period you can go for if you don't have an inventory, okay? Those of us that have been around doing this for a while, we can pretty much look at someone's inventory um, and, and we, can, we can give a good guesstimate of how many months or years they have in supplies, okay? So one of the things I wanna point out was uh, recently at a, a rally in Waynesville, North Carolina, um, I was talking to a couple of uh, patriots and we were talking about a food plan. And uh, one of the points made was um, shopping on a budget. So what I wanna show you is basically, I know you can't see it, but here's a receipt for $33, okay? $33, and in this $33, I have roughly one month of food. Sounds crazy? All right. In addition to $5 for the bucket and about $2 for the lid, these right here, what I have is a five gallon bucket. I do an inventory, I tape it on the side, it tells me exactly what's in here. Don't put it on the lid, because if you have buckets and you stack them, then you gotta move them all to find out what's in it. So why wouldn't I put all of my beans in one and my oatmeal in one and so forth? Because I build grab buckets. So basically, in this bucket here, what you see laying out here, I've already filled this bucket here. Okay, so I can grab this bucket here and for uh, probably a family of two to four, this is roughly seven to 10 days, maybe more, depending how much you eat, how much energy um, you put out during the day and how many calories you're consuming. Okay, and the age of the individuals. So in this bucket here, 
I have two 16 ounces of macaroni, one 18 ounce of Uncle Ben's whole wheat rice, one 16 ounce navy beans, two 16 ounce oatmeal, one 16 ounce yellow cornmeal, one 16 ounce pancake mix, one 18 ounce pasta, um, yolk free, one 18 ounce uh, bag of uh, spaghetti noodles pasta, one six pounds, pounds of pinto beans, and uh, one 16 ounce packet of lentils, okay? Ugh, lots of carbs, right? During a crisis, and if you're burning energy, carbs are not going to be necessarily bad for you. But you're going to augment this, these items here with your pressure canned or your store-bought proteins. Okay? These are going to get you through to where um, instead of having to run and find food in a store somewhere and possibly going out into a hazardous conditions. You can just go to a safe place in your home, maybe a cellar, and you can grab one of these buckets here, okay? This bucket here weighs about 20 pounds, roughly, right? So on my $33, on my $33 that I spent at the dollar store, great place to shop for preparedness food, I spent $33 and I got anywhere from 20 to 30 days worth of supplies that all I got to do is add water to them. Now you're going to want as you can um, to backfill with some protein again, okay? Chicken, tuna, beef, um, things of that nature that, that will help you out. All right? so. Again, if you want more information, um, you can email me again at preparedness101 at protonmail.com. You can go to the website at hopeforsurvival.com. You're on the YouTube page now. Um, there's numerous uh, videos here on YouTube from Hope for Survival on canning chicken, planning security, risk analysis, driving security, bugging in, bugging out, and so on. Okay. So um, make yourself at home, um, subscribe to the page so uh, you'll know when I put out new YouTube videos. I try to not flood it. Uh, time is also um, not always available to do so. If you go to the webpage for Hope for Survival, um, if you want to get on my mailing list, send me an email again at preparedness101 at protonmail.com, Facebook. Uh, you can also link in at Hope for Survival is my uh, page, okay? All right, so I hope that uh, this has offered you <clears throat> some other um, thoughts on food planning. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can do it pretty much for a uh, dollar or so a day. Um, you just, you um, just have to put a little effort and thought into it. Um, and remember, it's not always about want. Oftentimes, we have to slow down and uh, uh, invest in the things that we need, okay? There's a lot of different preparedness items. You can spend thousands of dollars. Security, weapons, ammunition, all different kinds of expensive things. But you have to have food, and you have to have water, all right? A lot of folks focus on um, <clears throat> their weapons and their ammunition when in a uh, grid down type environment they might need their weapons and ammunition maybe 10% of the time the bulk of their effort is going to be right here having food fixing food finding food planning for the future to um, grow more food where are they going to get food and for those who didn't prepare they're going to be needing and wanting food and um, you need to not only plan your your food plan and put it together but also um, um, if you can spread it out some so that if uh, someone breaks into your home um, looking for food if they find a little bit of it they don't find all of it and leave you high and dry okay all right so again 
I'm Bravo Echo from Hope for Survival. I hope you've gotten something out of this uh, video. And again, if you have questions, feel free to uh, send me a message. And until next time, be blessed, um, be faithful, and uh, always have hope. Okay, No matter how bad the day gets, we have to have hope and build off of hope for ourselves and our hopes um, to strengthen our mindset and hope for others. Okay? All right, be blessed.